वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओके विलाप कुसुमंजलि वर्स नाइन्टी जा चिता ललितया किल दिव्या लज्जया नत मुखिम गान तो माम देवी दिव्या रस काव्य कदम्बम पातयश्यसि कदा प्रणयेना ओ देवी वेन रिक्वेस्ट बाय ललित देवी Will you affectionately ask me, my head bowed with shyness, in the assembly to recite many splendid and sweet poems? So these are remembrances of Raghunath Daska Swami from when he was in internal absorption as Tulsi Manjari in the assembly of Sakis and Manjaris with Shrimati Radhika, and this is when he is more of a new Manjari, like the previous verse. The previous verse is describing how Radhika will teach him how to sing, or teach her how to sing. So after she has learned how to sing, then Radhika will put this to use and ask her to recite poems with a sweet voice. Actually, this is Lalita Devi requesting her. So Rati Manjari is in the group of Lalita Saki. She's our group leader. In the Swarup Rupanuga line, we're in the line of Lalita Devi or Swarup Damodar. And that line is coming through them to Bhakti Nur Thakur, through the Goswamis, to our Bhakti Sadanta, to our Param Guru Dev. So that's why we sing Lalita Sakira Ayogya Kinkori Vinoda Dadi Chepai. Bhakti Nur Thakur prays, Oh Lalita Saki, please accept me among your Kinkaris. So we are in her group. So in her group, sometimes she will request us to recite poems. And Rati Manjari is being requested to recite poems, but she is lowering her head in shyness. Because she's in the middle of all the senior sakis, manjaris, and so she's a bit shy because she's new. One time in Jagannath Puri, when Rag- Rupa Goswami joined the Vaishnavas there, even though he's Rupa Manjari, the topmost maidservant of Radhika in Braj, he was still considered to be like young or new, like a new devotee, new bhakta. He's a pure devotee, and everybody knows this. Even where he was living before, they made Radha Kun, Sham Kun, they made temples there. But when he came, then Mahaprabhu requested all the senior Vaishnavas to bless him. He said, "Oh, this is young Rupa. You should give him your blessings, that he can help and serve in this line." So when Mahaprabhu was dancing in Rathiyatra, he kept reciting one verse, and it. Was a famous love poem of that time. It's like if in Rathiyatra, one of the devotees started singing a, a Bollywood song, <laughs> because all the Bollywood songs are just basically love songs. And so, people were a bit confused. Why is Mahaprabhu, who is a sannyasi, singing this love poem? And the love poem goes like, "Oh, you are the same beloved. I am the same lover, but the atmosphere here is not like it was when we were young, by the river. I think Kewati. I want to be back there with you in your arms." And so again and again, Mahaprabhu was singing this, and many people were very astonished. Why is he singing like this? Some sannyasi. Sannyasis are supposed to be very serious and strong. Not absor- absorbed in kind of mundane relationships, so people were confused. Only two people fully understood Mahaprabhu's mood: Swarup Damodar, who is Lalita, and Rup Goswami. So why did he understand? Because he is Radhika's kinkari, Rupa Manjari. He, even though he is showing that he is a sadaka practitioner, the fact is that he is Radhika's Manjari, Rupa Manjari. And so Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself with the mood of Radhika. And so he is seeing Krishna, Jagannath, Shakshat Brijendra Nandan. He doesn't see Jagannath as like a wooden deity, Daru Brahma. Daru Brahma means God, spirit in the form of wood. He sees him as directly Brijendra Nandan Krishna, who has left Braj for a long time. And so, in the mood of Radhika, just like when Radhika went to Kurukshetra, Radhika was saying to Jagannath, uh, to Krishna, "You are the same Krishna. I am the same Radha." And yet, I wish to be with you 
in Braj by the river Jamuna, hearing you play on the fifth note of your flute. So this was Mahaprabhu's internal mood, the mood of Radhika. But he was singing some ordinary love poem. People think these things have no relevance to spiritual life. But this is one form of rasa. And the devotee, they can find the goodness in anything. The devotees who are uttamas, they see everything in relation to Krishna. So they hear a sweet love song, they think about Radha and Krishna's relationship. And then a lower level of devotee hears this and becomes very agitated. Oh, sense enjoyment. Oh, turn it off. And a Uttam Vaishnav, like Nada Drishi. Nada Drishi was in Kuvera Loka. Kuvera is his god brother. And Kuvera is the treasurer of the demigods. But Kuvera's two sons were very, like, rascal boys. Because Kuvera is so wealthy. And if you're very wealthy, kids brought up with privileges and very spoiled. So they would steal women from other families and enjoy with them. So they were enjoying in this garden area naked with many girls. And Nadad came by because his father asked him, you should help my sons. So Nadad was going by and he was singing Radhara Manahari Govinda Jai 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 Radhara Manahari Bo. And he saw this and he was only mood was, oh, this is like Braj, Krishna and the gopis. He wasn't agitated. His senses were not disturbed. Instead, he developed Udipan, stimulus for Braj. And that's why he sent them to Braj to become the twin Arjuna trees. And later they become, became Nala Kuver, Mani Grieve. And every day we're hearing from them. Prabhuji is reading Gopal Champu. These two boys, who were very naughty, by the mercy of the Uttam Bhagavat Narad, they both went to Braj and they became the reciters of Krishna Kata. Every morning they speak Kata, one hears, one speaks, one, and then they switch every day. So this is the mercy of the Mahabhagavat. So Mahaprabhu is singing this love poem and people are thinking, why is he singing this? But there's a, there's a saying in Sastra that Vaishnavira Kriya Mudra Vigyana Nabujai. Even a wise man cannot understand the activities of a pure Vaishnava. That even the Devas sometimes do not understand this. Therefore it is said that the Deva Deva Marchayat, unless you're on the platform of divine platform, you cannot recognize someone who has also on a divine platform. So Mahaprabhu is singing this. So Rupa Goswami wrote down Mahaprabhu's internal mood in this beautiful verse, Priyosaya Sahamchari. And he was very new at that time. So he wrote down the verse on a palm leaf and he was staying with Haridas Thakur because he was very humble. Even though Rupa Sanatana are Brahmins from birth, they were employed by the Muslim ruler. So the Brahmins considered them to be Muslims. Before, even if you take a glass of water, from a Muslim, you're considered Muslim. Or they would throw water on you and change your caste. So Rupa was very humble, so he stayed with Haridas Thakur. He was also Javana by caste. And together they would also not go to the Jagannath temple. They're very humble. But Mahaprabhu every day would send prasad for them. And every day Mahaprabhu would come for darshan. We heard this morning how Prabhuji said, Krishna, Ram, Mahaprabhu, they don't think, oh, you are an animal. Like Krishna's playing with all the kids, all the animals, the crows, the monkeys. All the boys, giving everyone equal prasadam. Ram was serving everyone equally. So Mahaprabhu got himself. These external distinctions are only uh, material. God doesn't see you're a Muslim or you're a Hindu. Or you're a Christian. God sees what is your Atma. And what is the mood or rasa of your Atma. And now we have different uh, coverings of different races, nationalities, religions. But when our soul blossoms into its spiritual form then that is a completely different thing. So Guru and Gu God himself, they see your spiritual potential, not your external thing. So Mahaprabhu would go for darshan. And when Mahaprabhu went for darshan, he would go and bathe in the ocean there nearby, Chatak Parvat, where Siddha Bakul, that whole area where Haridas stayed. And Rupa had kept this poem in the thatched roof. But Mahaprabhu, he had a sense in his heart that someone understood my mood and he's written down something. So he took this from the roof and he looked at it and he read and he began to smile and also blush because someone had understood his mood of Radharani. Like when we see Vaishnavas, externally they're strong, grave, man, saffron, shaved face. An ordinary person may see them and be a little afraid. There's a saying in this world that in India, you should stay like 10 feet away from a snake you know, 50 feet away from a politician, 
and a thousand feet away from a sadhu. Because if you come nearby a sadhu, they're very dangerous. They'll make you into a sadhu. Snake may bite you, you can get medicine. Politician may trick you, you can escape. But if a sadhu catches you, there's no escape. You're surrend you're, they'll, they'll tell you, oh, yes, you do as you like, go home as you like. But Rupa Goswami says, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, if you don't want to leave your family life, your worldly life, then don't go to Keshi Ghat. Don't look at that Krishna. If you want to see that Krishna, he'll steal your heart. He's a great thief. So sadhus are also like that. They're Krishna's followers. They're in the Chutta Gotra. So they're expert at stealing people's hearts. And all you have to do is one time develop a little mood. Ekbar dekle chakshe jal. One time you have a little bit of mood of bhakti, then that's like you offering your free will. Okay, meaning you're surrendering. In spiritual life, there's complete independence. But you have such a sweet, loving relationship, you'll never leave your beloved. If you are truly in love, you have independence. But you're so in love, you'll never leave. So when you surrender to Krishna, you fall in love. But at the same time, you're independent. You can leave. Krishna's not forcing you to stay with him. You can leave. But who would ever leave? Because you're so in love with him. He's so attractive. It's like you're a jiva and Krishna is the supreme lord. He's the supreme whole. You're a spark. And a piece of iron will be attracted to a magnet. So Krishna is the supreme, all-attractive magnet of all souls. And if you come nearby him, and if you take all the rust of maya off, once you're attracted to him, you'll never leave. So sadhus are like that. So that's why it said, don't go to Keshi God if you're attached to your family life, if you're attached to your sangsara. So Mahaprabhu said, oh Rupa, now you should read this poem. And Rupa was very shy. So this is like this verse. Rupa was very shy. He was thinking, oh, all the devotees are here. How can I read this poem? So he began to read it. And all the devotees began to clap very happily because he had fully revealed Mahaprabhu's heart. And then Mahaprabhu had everyone give him blessings. And then Mahaprabhu said, he will reveal the mood of Braj in this world. He will reveal the glories of Braj. He will fulfill my desire. Krishna said, samyujam. I cannot repay the gopis. I am indebted to you. But when I come again as Mahaprabhu, he said, when I come again, I will bring many more jivas into your group and they will glorify you and in this way you will be glorious. So in this way, I will serve you and show my honor to you. So when Lalita Devi asks Tulsi Manjari to speak some poems, she begins to blush and, and very shyly, she begins to recite, recite these poems. Okay, so we'll go to the next verse. Radha Radha, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel down there. Share with your friends. Ask a question in the comments. And check out our website, creepa.tv, for courses to support us and for our articles and more. Adibo.